Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe, everybody, to another pretty small village. And this one is a straight walk straight down the road you can see in front of us here before we hit a footpath which will bring us back to the start shouldn't take me too long it's a very narrow village as well so I'm, i try not to be uh too long in it because otherwise people might complain about where i've parked to be honest with you there is nowhere to park in this place welcome to the parish of west league Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. West Leak, West Brook. Right folks, here comes the first of the Leak Twins, situated in a shallow valley on a winding country lane. This is West Leak, and despite the name, it's got nothing to do with vegetables. Leak is a Saxon word, and it means brook or stream. The watercourse this refers to is Kingston Brook, which runs to the south of the village. One of the earliest mentions of West Leak is in the Doomsday Book, where it was recorded as Lek. At that time, the village was divided into four holdings which encompass what are today East Leak and West Leak. These were owned by some familiar names, including Henry de Ferris, who was the tenant in chief and lord, and good old Roger de Busley, who had land here as well. Those two got about almost as much as me back in the day, didn't they? West Leak has always been closely associated with its neighbour East Leak as a result, but during the 14th century, West Leak became the less important of the two, whilst East Leak, an open village, grew massively. Farming has always been important here, but the Leaks have another important piece of industrial history, basket making. Baskets made here were sold in London, some even to Parliament. West Leak is a linear settlement with a church and a village hall, and this one's rather good for plane spotting, and I'm going to show you where the best spot is. Let's go! Our start point is a bus stop and this shelter is also the local book exchange. This has to be one of the best stocks I think I've ever seen. You could lose yourself for hours in here. West Leak is a conservation area. It has a very simple plan of one main street. It enjoys a unity of form and has a genuine rural feel. It's surrounded by agricultural land with the village of Sutton Bonington further to the west and East Leak to the east. Further to the south is the A6006, which links it to main arterial routes like the A60 and the A6. Here's our first major landmark, the Church of St Helena. A religious building has stood on this site since Saxon times, but the oldest part of the present church, the North Wall, dates back to the 12th century. Its nave is noted for being unusually long. The chancel was enlarged and the south aisle built to create a chapel in the 14th century. It doesn't have a tower, instead it has a bell coat with two bells. The timber lick gate at the entrance to the churchyard serves as a World War I memorial and it's a listed building, just like the church itself. The 
green in front of the church features a magnificent chestnut tree. Trees are certainly not something Westleak is short of. For the next few yards, you feel like you've been transported into some sort of forest, but soon these die away to reveal more properties. In addition to the church and its lick gate, there are just four other listed structures in Westleak. Only two are houses, despite the very old nature of the village. They're not all ancient properties though, there are some newer infills here and there. Take these two houses as good examples. As we continue down the road, it's not long before we come to the next major landmark, the Village Hall. Built in 1850, it used to be a school. It was constructed by the then owner of the village, Edward Strutt, the first Lord Belper. According to records, Lady Belper, concerned with poor living standards in the village, used to provide bread and cheese in the school for the children. In 1966, it was donated to the village for use as a village hall. It's the location of the parish notice board, so let's get that job out of the way here. Six down, 53 to go. At this point, a horse rider came past, not an unusual sight in Westleek. The village's last post office used to be next to the old school in a thatched building, but it closed in 1977. Other businesses and trades to have been located here in the 19th century include a blacksmith, a butcher, a joiner and a stonemason. In the 18th century, basket weaving was a cottage industry. Many baskets made here were taken to London and sold. One house close by, simply called The Basket, preserves this piece of industrial history by way of a blue plaque. As with most villages in Rushcliffe, farming was always the biggest employer. In 1752, Westleek had 12 farm holdings, the largest of which was 300 acres. By 1870, there were 14, and in 1960, there were still 13. Now though, only Manor Farm remains. The road now starts to bend southwards towards Westleek's much bigger sister settlement, Eastleek. That's a future episode. For us though, right now, we're taking a bridleway at this corner, which will carry us back to the start, parallel with the main village street. This crosses a stream via a small wooden bridge. This isn't Kingston Brook, but it is connected to it. I'd imagine not many people walk this route because it's a bit muddy. Mind you, one group of people who might are aviation enthusiasts because this is a great little spot for plane watching. If that's you, make sure to bring your wellies in the wintertime because this is what the path looks like. It ain't nice. The countryside views though are worth it, even if you don't like planes. This is the view you get to the north from here over the rolling Rushcliffe Hills. It's a brilliant unobstructed vantage point for watching aircraft. After taking off from East Midlands Airport, planes often turn over this field before heading in the direction they need to go. You can just about, in places, make out the airport on the horizon, along with the towers of ratcliffe on saw Power Station. After about 10 minutes, the path reaches Dark Lane, named thanks to its high hedgerows which block out sunlight. In 1891, Westleek's original post office was at the junction of Dark Lane and Main Street, but it closed five years later to be replaced with the one we talked about earlier. Okay, we are back to the beginning after completing the circuit of West Leek. Now that actually is the parish complete. However, I'm going to tag something onto the end of this, which actually isn't in West Leek Parish, but it kind of thinks it is. It belongs to Sutton Bonington, but you'll see why I'm including it here in a moment. To the south of the village is Kingston Brook, from which the village gets its name, as Leek means brook or stream. It forms the parish boundary with Sutton Bonington, and as such, the area we're now coming into is not technically in West Leek. However, I've included it here because the Star, a pub literally right on the brook, terms itself as being in the village. The pub used to be known by a different name, the Pit House, because it was often frequented by mine workers from the local gypsum pits. It's also the reason why Pit House Lane, the road between West Leek and the Star, is named as such. Despite its name, the locals still know this as the Pit House. This very old pub was refurbished in 2012 and reopened after a period of closure. And speaking of closure, that's the end of our West Leek adventure. 
next week we'll be using a bit of local public transport, because the next village is one of the longest linear settlements in the entire country. It stretches for well over a mile end to end. Come back in seven days time and see what it can tell us. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.